The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. It's the Full Melt Show. Our newscast begins with new developments on a story we first told you about this noon in Menominee County. Action 2 News was there as federal drug enforcement agents raided Menominee tribal land, confiscating industrial hemp plants in a way the Menominee tribe says was unnecessary. Agents were working at several locations for most of the morning. The activity was concentrated along County Road M near the Menominee Indian Reservation and Oconto County border. George Roda shows us what agents did and why the tribe is upset. They started early on the Menominee Reservation. We saw federal agents piling load after load of what the Menominee Tribe of Wisconsin says is industrial hemp crop onto the back of Menominee County Highway dump trucks. DEA, FBI, state and county authorities, undercover agents, along with the Menominee Tribal Police, all on scene, some wearing military tactical gear and armed with AR-15s. About a half mile down the road, even more industrial hemp taken away. The Menominee say they legalized growing industrial hemp on their reservation in May and believe the crop is legal to grow under the 2014 Farm Bill, a notion the U.S. Attorney General disagrees with, according to the tribe. The tribe says it offered to settle the dispute in court but were denied. In a statement, the tribe says these offers by the tribe were rejected in favor of the aggressive unilateral action we saw today. The tribe calls the seizure unnecessary and says now it has no choice but to move forward with litigation. Late this afternoon, the DEA confirmed the operation but wouldn't give us further details citing the pending investigation. It has no plans of releasing more information anytime today. Live in the newsroom, George Rodas, Action 2 News. Are you high? I'm what are you high. talking about? This is the full melt Give me a The Full Melt Show. A marijuana discussion about news, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. Hey, welcome to another edition of the Full Meld Show. Back <laughs> for another week. Oh, good Lord. What are we doing here? Oh, boy. Let me just tell you, it's been an interesting few days for this cannabis announcer. There are some things better saved for other days in storytelling, and I will reserve my comments for that time. In the meanwhile, this entertaining bit of music because it goes with our front leading story there doesn't it we could sing a good song if we have one more person to sing true mana, mana. hi there would you like to sing a song with us mana, mana. isn't that the name of a song i think so no menominee <clears throat> Look, I just want these guys to say the word right. Menominee. Menominee. I mean, if we're going to talk about the Indians, you got to at least say their damn names right. You can't say men- 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 it- It's this word. Menominee. Yeah, see, that's, that's what it is. It's Menominee. I mean, this lady at the news uh, station uh, tripped over Menominee about three different times. Uh, look, um, there's a lot of states with a lot of cities that have tribal Indian names in them. Menominee is one of them. Uh, you know, Sheboygan, there's all kinds of places around here in Michigan, including Detroit, uh, which have Indian backgrounds. I mean, the Chesapeake Bay. I mean, it goes on and on. And how can you not know Menominee? Uh, the story is about the Menominee Indians. And so I, I, it always reminds me of these guys. <laughs> I'm a product of the child of the 70s and the 80s. You can't miss the Menuppets, uh, the Menuppets, uh, the Menuppets <laughs> with the Menominee song. <laughs> Every time I heard the Menominee song, I always thought Menominee. Do, 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 do. Um, this, the, the thing is, is that these guys, these Menominee Indian tribe, 
In Wisconsin, incidentally, this uh, this story came out of Wisconsin. Um, have been growing this cannabis. It's not really cannabis. It's 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 considered that by the DEA and the FDA and blah blah blah. It's it's really hemp. And there are some side notes to the story, which I don't know. Uh, they're just really anecdotal. They're little side trails. They mean nothing to the meat of the story. The meat of the story is the federal government came in and took some thirty thousand hemp plants. I mean, this was all hemp. None of this was marijuana. Now, they came in and did some field testing, and, you know, one was positive. You know, the, the, the first one was negative, and then they did some other ones, and they, they said so those ones were positive. This has to do with a field test for cannabis. I mean, these are, these are car test kits. They're, they're indicators. They're not um, in any way definitive. Let's put it that way. They're not definitive at all. I got to shut this Menominee song off because it's driving me nuts. It's in here playing in the background. You can't hear it, but I can see it. It's driving me crazy. Uh, the Menominee Indians were just growing some hemp. And the DEA comes along and whacks it down. A la, AKA, or uh, I guess a la is better. A la white plume style. I mean... Back uh, just a little less than a year ago, by a couple of months, uh, Alex Whiteplume was on this very show. Um, Alex Whiteplume is in a tribe in South Dakota. Uh, Mr. Whiteplume and his tribe on their sovereign Indian territorial land, uh, you know, I guess reservation land. It's really not territorial land. It's reservation land. Let's, let's, you know, not paint it in the wrong light. It is reservation land. It's not the land I'm sure that the Indian tribe chose to have. It's what was left over by the federal government at some point that they said, you know that place over there? You know the place that's all deserted and has no plants on it and really doesn't have any agricultural value? Yeah, that place over there. Guess what? We're going to give that to you. You can have that. You can go live over there. That's what happened. But so these guys have always been depressed in, in many of these reservations economically. And they've always had issues with alcohol. It seems to be uh, pervasive in the Indian community in Canada as well. And so naturally, these tribal leaders uh, lead a, lean away from things that might cause their tribe, you know, harm. If the tribe is going to be negatively impacted by some substance issue, especially being them so sensitive to this alcohol situation, uh, they tend to lean away from it. Um, because, you know, once bitten, twice shy. You know, they, they've been shell-shocked a little bit by the alcohol thing. And I'm sure to some extent the meth epidemic. But um, when it comes down to growing hemp on tribal lands, Mr. White Plume, uh, who started trying to grow hemp um, as a, I believe, uh, economic measure, uh, you know, these tribes have, uh, you know, no employment there. There's, there's no real industry on these leftover lands that nobody wanted that were given you to live upon. And so when they started, Mr. White Plume was growing, and him and his tribe were growing this really modest uh, hemp uh, crop in just a field with naturally grown seeds. They weren't even grown. They were, they were harvested upon the riverbanks. It's a naturally growing, occurring hemp growing uh, there along the riverbanks in South Dakota. And so they gathered enough seed together from this wild hemp growing and managed to sow a crop into a field. And in 2000, I believe, uh, began the epic of Mr. White Plume's um, multiple attempts to grow a hemp crop to boost the economy of his tribe. And uh, each time the federal government came by and got increasingly foreboding about it. Um, and, and what they did was they said, look, oh, this is the third time we've come out here now. And this was, what, I don't know, a few years later. They said, look, I think this was like, if I'm not mistaken, it was 2006, 2007, somewhere in there. Maybe it might have even been eight or it could have even been nine. It was, it was somewhere in that neighborhood when he did this uh, again. And they came out and said, look, um, we're going to make you sign this agreement that says, um, you know, we'll settle out of court. We're not going to take you uh, to, you know, to federal court over um, – you know, criminal charges, but we are going to ask you to sign this document that says you're not going to grow any kind of cannabis or hemp on tribal lands again. 
And uh, I'm looking this up after hearing this DEA story about this tribe, the Menominee Indians in Wisconsin. <laughs> or I'm sorry, Minnesota? Hmm. See, now I'm a little confused. I got to look them up. Uh, it's Minnesota, Wisconsin. I mean, they're right next door to each other, aren't they? But now, for the sake of argument, I have to uh, look the issue up because I, I don't want to be mistaken about, you know, where this, where this exactly happened. I, it's either, it's, it's Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, um, this tribe, they started growing some hemp, too. Now, Mr. White Plume, uh, by the way, I, I started to say that I looked up uh, Mr. White Plume's story as it relates to this one, because they're really their neighbors. Uh, and Mr. White Plume's uh, appeal, see, he went back to the, the prosecuting attorney, the federal prosecuting attorney who asked, he, he asked him, look, since the federal government has changed, and this is what our interview on the radio show was about back a few months ago, you know, six, eight months ago, um, was with regards to them returning because the federal government had changed their position and allowed tribal lands, tribal nations, to go ahead and, if they chose to, if they so chose to, regulate the cannabis industry, even as retail cannabis, so to the extent that Colorado or Washington went through, or Oregon or the rest. Uh, if you want to do a heavily regulated system that complies with the same rules and regulations that... Uh, we, we, you know, look the other way at on these other states, then you're, you're go ahead and do that. We're, we're going to give you the permission to go ahead and do that. But you have to comply with it in certain ways. This is these are the thing, the components that have to be a part of that recipe. In the long run, Mr. White Plume went back and asked, because the federal government had changed their mind, can we go ahead and resume growing cannabis? I'm sorry, hemp on our lands. Well, we weren't going to grow cannabis in the first place where we were just growing hemp. Can we go ahead and start growing hemp again and ignore the court order that we, you had to sign earlier about this? Since the federal government changed its mind, it's no longer a forbidden activity as long as we obey the law. And it's not even just the, that memo, but there was an earlier thing. There was an earlier congressional act that said states uh, can and go ahead and enact their own pilot programs for industrial research uh, on agricultural plots for hemp. And this is what's allowed Kentucky and other places. My friend Joe Brown out at uh, the Michigan Hemp Company in Sarnac, Michigan, um, is growing hemp both on his land there, just a short little crop as, as a researched crop, but is doing it industrial on an industrial scale in, in Kentucky. And so Mr. Whiteplum was told, no, you still can't. We're, gonna, we're not going to rescind the order that you signed. You still can't grow hemp on your tribal lands, even though Colorado, you go buy outright marijuana as, as an adult. But these people in uh, Wisconsin uh, put their heads spinning. What does the federal government mean about all this business about raiding our stupid hemp crop? Are you kidding me? More on Cannabis News coming up next. You're getting the full melt. Hello, boys and Jews. Your old friend the Crypt Keeper here with a Pottober News bullet in. <laughs> Ghoulies and creepies gather thee round for a map to patients partying down. As the days grow shorter to the end of month 10, it's time to gather friend among friend. Michigan card holders, admission is free to the X on the map dubbed Hall Deboween. This lore of free fun is perfectly true, and this is the invite. Yes, that means you. The vendors and speakers this day are just ghosts, exchanged for free entry, free food, and a toast. Asunder our differences this Hallow's Eve, so we may bring fire to glorious weed. You may light up and your neighbor may match it. The smoke in the air is to bury the hatchet. The contests you enter are all also free. Considerable prizes for the winners they'll be. Can of meds are welcome. It's alcohol free. The Jam Shack, Mount Morris, from 7 till 3. <laughs> Dabbawine sponsors include Depot Town of Ypsilanti, and Sweetly, Flint, Arborside, Ann Arbor, Third Coast, Ypsilanti, a Dank Team, Flint, Two Guys in a Grow Shop, Burton, Florida Bob's Play, Puff and Stuff of Lansing, Happy Buddha, Lansing, The Spot, Kalamazoo, Compassion Club U.S. of Grand Rapids, Iron Labs, Walt Lake, Herbal Solutions, Ypsilanti, Bio Cultivation, The Herbal Center of Mount Morris, IDK Farms, Kurtz Leach and Associates of Birmingham, Act Labs, Lansing, Go Clark Bash Investments, Burton, Hybrid Dot Life Magazine, Once Bitten, Twice Baked, Lush Lighting in Nile, Cannabis Council, Detroit, Nichols Law Firm, East Lansing, The Green Rock Cafe, Flint, Urban Garden Supply, Flint, Also The Marijuana Ranch, Happy Harvesters, The Full Melt Show, Lindy Fed, Matty Eddie, Lex Cocaine, Jackson Farm, and BDT Hazel Park. Got something to hide? 
Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. It's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway or call 810 259 25 the Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place. All solutions. Registered, licensed, certified, ordained. Sacred Elements. Massage, hypnosis, Reiki. Sacred Elements. Raindrop, aroma and color therapy. Body detox. Ministry, life coaching, weight and nutrition counseling. Sacred Elements. Next to the Sweet Leaf, 400 South Door Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, close Sunday. Call 810-259-257. Don't miss the first ever cannabis competition this year as the prize contest moves from Amsterdam to Jamaica. That's right, it's all Jamaican fun. Now with the big competition in Negril this November. Get your best travel accommodations now at jamaicapot.com. Pack your beach bong and swimsuit and party down at the warm sunny beaches of Negril, Jamaica for the first ever big cannabis event this year. Do it in style or come have fun on a budget. Best travel prices now at jamaicapot.com. That's jamaicapot.com. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that, as traders, we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. Every time I stare into the sun Hey, just as a program note, uh, coming up a little later on in the program, I'll give you uh, a clue. In fact, I'll give you the clue right now on how to win a $50 value Canalock no-smell bag. Uh, this thing is uh, made of a military grade. It's the same stuff that they made the uh, military uh, chemical warfare suits out of. It's an impermeable barrier, and it's got a lining impregnated with a carbon-activated filter. So everything inside the bag gets absorbed. Nothing permeates the bag. So you've got a no-smell bag, and it works really well. It's got a double seal on it, uh, Velcro, uh, both on the inside and on the outside. Uh, look at uh, nosmell.com and check out the great videos there about people checking out uh, the cannabis bags with the cannabis in there. The no-smell bags, the Cantalock no-smell bags with the weed in the bag. Uh, you can't smell it. And then, uh, you know, it's dog-proof. Check it. Uh, see if your dog could tell the difference. Uh, 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 take an empty bag, put uh, put nothing in there, and then put the put the bag in there with the can with the cannabis. You won't smell it. So uh, the magical words are, are Anderson Cooper. If you can tell me Anderson Cooper later on in the program, and you have to be a live listener to make this work. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. The question is, who says at the beginning of the program, "Are you high? What are you talking about?" Um. It's Anderson Cooper from CNN that says that. He said that to a political colleague one day. I thought it was funny as hell. Um, and that's why I use it on the program. But um, if you know that information later on in the program and are able to answer it correctly after calling us at 1-844-420-TALK, our toll-free studio lines, the Cantalock No Smell Bag lines, uh, then I will give you a Cantalock bag, and I will throw in a bonus full-color No Smell T-shirt. I'm sorry, not No Smell. It's a, it's a Full Melt T-shirt. Uh, the Full Melt Radio Show with thefullmelt.com. It's got the logo on there. It's pretty cool. It's got the wax dripping thing. So um, we'll uh, throw those out to you if you know the answer to that question. The question in Ohio is issue three. Oh, wait a minute. And issue two. Now, I, I don't know what issue one is. What's issue one? I'm not sure. I know issue two is the legislative initiative. Or wait a minute. I'm like, which one is it? 
I think issue three is the legislative initiative. No, I think it's the other way around. So what happened was the legislature pushed this initiative issue two on when they saw the writing on the wall of issue three getting enough signatures to get on the ballot. That's what it is. So according to the Times reporter at timesreporter.com out of Ohio, on November 3rd, voters across the state in Ohio will be deciding if the use of marijuana will be legal for recreational and medicinal purposes. In the months leading up to Election Day, many area organizers and government entities, businesses, law enforcement have spoken out against Issue 3 and passed resolutions opposing it. Uh, They cite expected problems in the workplace. Oh, it's such a red herring. Um, Okay, so here's the deal. Let's just compare. Uh, Let's just pick these apart one by one. Just look at stop the tape for a second. And pick that issue apart, point the and counterpoint on that. So your point is that there are going to be problems in the workplace, right? Do people ever show up drunk at work? Well, occasionally you get the crackpot who does. Somebody develops a problem somewhere along the way, and one day, bingo, bango. Hey, aren't you, didn't you have a four-martini lunch? It was supposed to be a one-martini. Okay, it should have been a no-martini lunch. You had four? Wait a minute. Um, Is that vodka in your... Every once in a while, you'll get that. It's not a common thing. Uh, People generally, if they want to have a job, can't show up to work drunk. It's just part of the business. So if there was ever an argument in the real world to be made about this subject of legal alcohol use versus legal cannabis use and some associated perceived potential problem in the workplace, it would be answered by the former, wouldn't it? It would be answered by the issue with alcohol because we already have a working system that keeps people employed by not showing up drunk at work. It's part of being a responsible adult, right? If you're going to enjoy adult libations for celebratory purposes, you can go off on the, in the evening or, or when it doesn't matter to your career work or other activities and enjoy those libations a little bit in excess. If you so choose and have no repercussions of it, this is why we have a weekend. This is why there's a Friday and a Saturday. So that Sunday you can recoup and go back to work on Monday. This is how Americans operate. Routinely across the board, systematic wide. It is homogenous. If you go to California, it's the same thing as if you're in New York or in in Maryland or in Florida or in Michigan. People drink responsibly because that's what you have to do as a responsible adult. The same thing goes with cannabis consumption. You know, a doctor can't show up drunk and perform some intricate surgery, right? It's against his rules. It's against his ethics. It's against common sense. The guys, you know, they they test people for this kind of stuff. If you're operating a train or a plane or an automobile, You're subject to being sober. It's how things work. Oh, we'll get to the automobile thing later because that's another red herring, isn't it? An even bigger red herring. So if they're worried about uh, the situation with a perceived problem in the workplace that could result if you happen to pass legal and recreational marijuana, medical and recreational cannabis in Ohio, I think that you'll have no more additional problems in the workplace. No more than you already had with alcohol or that already exists in the black marketplace because people already consume cannabis moderately and responsibly and still show up at work every day and do their jobs according to edict. They do your bidding for you. You write them a check. They go home and they smoke a joint. It's no big deal. Get over it already. There's no issue in the workplace. We're already doing exactly what's going to happen after you pass this. It's already happening. Nothing's going to change. It's all fallacy. Next point, uh, the, cost, cause the, the cost for all that concern, so the excited expected problems in the workplace, use among youth. Okay, wait a minute. So let's talk about that point. Um, if you are a youth, if you're somebody they would label as youth, whatever the definition of youth is, because I consider myself youthful, <laughs> but I'm really middle-aged, right? Um, what is youth? So we're talking about underage people. Generally speaking, under 18, but theoretically speaking, potentially under 21. Or maybe even, maybe if youth concerns 
almost all adults in their 20s. I don't know. What do they want to talk about? Youth. But either way, under any definition, no matter how you slice that pie, if you're somebody entitled to the label of youth in Ohio and you want marijuana, it's available to you right next door. It's available to you right down the street. You can order and get cannabis delivered to your house quicker than you can get a pizza. It's already available. Uh, The youth already have access to this. If they're going to smoke weed, they're going to smoke weed. There's not some threshold by which they might choose to do it otherwise. If they're going to do it, it's already available. It's right there. It's So here's the other thing. Um, retail shops, card people, uh, the drug dealer down the street or the guy that's making the delivery, he's not carding anybody. He just care, The only card he looks for is, is, is the one with Washington's face on it. He wants the dollar bill. He's looking for Benjamins, uh, not IDs. He'll never ask a potential drug client, for his identification or her identification. It doesn't occur. So this issue about access by youth is, again, just another law enforcement red herring. This is old school prohibition tactics. Um, Trying to put the brakes on what is inevitably uh, rolling down the hill straight at them in Ohio. So next issue, so the net, what's, so health concerns and drug addiction, those are the other two issues that these people cite. Health issues. So in the first place, cannabis and tobacco are two different things. In the second place, if you've got different forms of cannabis use, uh, if you're talking about lung health, and I think that's overall what they're pointing to, it's the implication, because uh, nobody's ever had health issues from consuming other edible forms or vaporized forms of cannabis. But if you want to consider um, marijuana smoking and cigarette smoking side by side, I can I, I see them much the same. Um, there are some carcinogens involved. Uh, there are some other uh, drug I- implications involved. In one case, uh, nicotine. In another, um, THC and CBD and cannabinoids. The entourage effect coming on from all those uh, wonderful cannabinoids and terpenes and you know, it, flavonoids. It goes on. There's some, you know, 180 some odd components, uh, most of them identified at this point, uh, that go into a cannabis. It's not so with tobacco. But you don't smoke cannabis like you do tobacco. Tobacco you smoke and then, you know, you get this peak and fall and then when you fall you get another cigarette. So you're smoking, 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 smoking. You know the definition of a chain smoker. It's a chain smoking. You put out one and light another. That's chain smoking. You don't do that with cannabis. Uh, with cannabis, you're lucky to get past, if you're smoking by yourself, you're lucky to get past half a joint before you're going to put it down. Because that's enough. I don't need any more. I'm not going to get anything more out of this. I'm going to put this out and save it for later. It's a kind of expensive. You'll never see a cigarette smoker do that. So they'll pick up that same, now roach, it's a half a joint or maybe three quarters of a joint. It depends on how uh, big the joint was and what your tolerance level is. It's going to be variable. But I would say that virtually everybody, even a heavy user, will... Likely, if they're smoking a joint by themselves, we'll put it out partway through. You don't see people smoking, uh, you know, cigarette tobacco out of a pipe very often uh, for a reason. It's too repetitive. You do it too much. It's a routine. You tap one out, pack it, and light it again. And it goes too fast. So now you want to so health concerns and then a drug addiction. Uh, the slippery slope effect. You know, if there ever was a gateway to drug addiction, I would call it sugar and caffeine and then nicotine. I mean, those are the those are the gateway drugs. That's what opens Pandora's box. These are all similar substances. It's just that some of them have lesser effects, seem to be somewhat less detrimental, but they're addictive nonetheless. All of them. Who doesn't get up and say, I can't live without my cup of coffee in the morning? Who doesn't say, I can't drink that coffee now because I'll never get to bed? It's because you're being stimulated by this stuff. And you will get addicted to it. It will keep you from going to sleep. It will wake you up in the morning. For the most part. Actually, uh, that doesn't work with me very well. If I drink coffee, I go right to sleep. I'm antithetical to the rest of the population. Uh, It's just like those people who take Ritalin. If you're taking the Ritalin or what are these other things? uh, What's those other things they do? 
Uh, there are other various forms of these same types of uppers, but they're given to people for ADD and ADHD. Um, when you give these kids those, or use generally kids, but adults too, I guess, if you give somebody with that condition this stimulant, it tends to calm them down. It's the opposite of normal people. That's why they give it to them. It's so they can focus. They're not hyper. They're not all over the place. They can actually stop and look at something and absorb it rather than be distracted by something else before they can absorb anything else and then distracted by something else before they can absorb that. I mean, they scatter all over and they never get anything. It's a learning disability of sorts. But it gives them an opportunity to slow down enough and focus. Stop long enough, slow down long enough to focus. It, it calms them. But you give some, this to somebody without that condition and they're bright, they're, you know, um, it's a stimulant. I mean, they're going to they're gonna get a big high off of this. And this is why these drugs get abused by those people. The people that are prescribed them don't abuse them because you can only you know, get knocked down so far. But it doesn't have the stimulant effect. <laughs> Same thing goes with me with this stupid caffeine. That's the gateway drug. I mean, I think the idea of gateway in the first place is rather silly. Because the idea of gateway, as it's prescribed by prohibitionists, is the following. Well, if you're going to use that illegal substance, when you go there, there's access to all these other drugs, right? If you want to go get your cannabis, the same guy might sell you some other harder drug. And so one day when you go to get the cannabis, um, he might offer it to you. Or you might decide, hey, you got anything else? That's the slippery slope. That's the slope that they're talking about. But again, if you talk about regulation, where cannabis sales are open, like alcohol. Because why doesn't alcohol lead to cocaine? Well, it kind of does sometimes. Alcohol leads to heroin. does all the time. Heroin is a whole you know, other beast by itself. It's another addict. you, you got to have the heroin to live. Point being, in the long run, if you intend to um, talk about the slippery slope, I think it's a, mo- a moot point. Because alcohol, like I said, um, is, is m- probably more addictive ever. Uh, you can die from alcohol withdrawal. Um, marijuana withdrawal, if there is any withdrawal, it might be some momentary uncomfortableness, some irritability. Uh, no more than, I suppose, um, I suppose lesser than a cigarette. I- I'll... I'm a cigarette smoker. I'm a tobacco addict. If I go without tobacco, it'll drive me insane. In fact, the last few cigarettes go fast because I'm I'm smoking them faster in anticipation of not having any more. Never happens with cannabis. And if I don't have cannabis, yeah, I might be irritated for a minute. But, you know, if, if, if there's some psychological withdrawal effect, but it always goes away really quickly. And it's nowhere near that of nicotine. You're getting the bull milk. Get ready. Let's go. Hey, na, 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 na. Oh, hey, na, hey. latest styles to mix it and mash it so make it your own and bend the trend jc penny when it fits you feel it during the jc penny back to school hot sale get an extra ten dollars off when you spend 25 or more with coupon nike converse levi's and other exclusions apply what's up with these things victor we decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release we read about ten thousand suggestions a week to create features that as traders we'd want to use ten thousand suggestions who reads all of those he does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. Don't miss the first ever cannabis competition this year as the prize contest moves from Amsterdam to Jamaica. That's right, it's all Jamaican fun now with the big cup competition in Negril this November. Get your best travel accommodations now at jamaicapot.com. Pack your beach bong and swimsuit and party down at the warm sandy beaches of Negril, Jamaica for the first ever big cannabis event this year. Do it in style or come have fun on a budget. Best travel prices now at jamaicapot.com. That's jamaicapot.com. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the Allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart, And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, 
soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. We asked people to tell us something that happened in their past and something that might happen in their future. The good things were put on yellow magnets and the bad ones on blue. The results show the past was a pretty even mix of good and bad, yet the future was almost all good things. Now that you've seen the results of this experiment, what does it mean to you? We all want to think about positive stuff. Realistically, there will be downtimes. It's great to think optimistically, but let's plan for whatever the future might bring. Prudential, bring your challenges. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. I feel you in these walls. You're cold, they're creeping in. Show it to my bones and skin. All right, so the magic words you got to know are Anderson Cooper. I'm going to ask you who says those words are, are you high? What are you talking about at the beginning of the show? Anderson Cooper from CNN says it. If you can cite me back those words after the next break. We come back after the next break. And I'll remind you before the break what those words are, too. Uh, you can call us and win a free Cantalock No Smell bag. Uh, Cantalock sponsors our phone lines. We've got some free bags to give away. I'll give you a T-shirt, a No Smell, I'm sorry, a FullMelt.com T-shirt as well uh, as a prize package. It's about a $75 value altogether. So uh, we were talking a bit about this uh, business that... Um, Ohio's concerned about, uh, you know, uh, the prohibitionist language. And, and I think in the grander scheme of things, look at your neighbors to the north. I mean, they just, and then your neighbors to the south, there's something going on down there now, too. So uh, the, they just elected a new prime minister. The a new platform, the party platform is we're going to legalize cannabis. We're done with this argument. Let's get it over with already. Let's, let, let's regulate it. And tax it and get past this issue as a uh, you know, health issue, a social health issue, and not a criminal justice one. It's a waste of money, and it's unenforceable. Uh, let's find some better benefit to the use of some of those funds and save some funds, for crying out loud. Get some tax relief from the spending end, right? That's what they passed. That's what's going on. So now what's happened in Mexico? Well, there is a landmark case in Mexico's Supreme Court, according to the Huffington Post, that could pave the way for marijuana legalization. Um, on Wednesday, I believe that's last week, Mexico's Supreme Court, no, that's this week, uh, is going to debate whether the prohibition of consumption and cultivation of marijuana for personal use is unconstitutional. The court's going to determine whether the prohibition of the consumption of marijuana and its cultivation for non-commercial ends violates the human right to the free development of one's personality. What? So apparently the Mexican Constitution says that you have a right to the free development of one's personality. And the argument's being made at the Supreme Court level that cannabis prohibition for consumption and cultivation for your own personal use, you can't sell it, but for your own personal use, is a violation of those constitutional rights. I don't know why they didn't argue this earlier. I don't. The landmark case could lead to the legalization of marijuana for recreational purposes if followed up with the legislation. Uh, the debate in Mexico's Supreme Court is extraordinary for two reasons. Because it is being argued on human rights grounds. And because it is taking place in one of the countries that has suffered the most from the war on drugs. In the eight years since former President Felipe Calderon ramped up the militarized response to drugs and trafficking, the surge of violence has led to the death of 100,000 people and the disappearance of another 25,000 in Mexico. The public debate on marijuana has surged in Mexico in recent months since the case of an eight-year-old girl with epilepsy who became Mexico's first marijuana patient made national and international headlines. Uh, the government granted the right to import and administer a cannabis-based treatment for the young patient. It is unprecedented for the Supreme Court to introduce a human rights dimension to the debate on drug policy, says Lisa Sanchez, Latin American program manager for the Transform Drug Policy Foundation and Mexico Unido Contra. I don't know. It's 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 Spanish. 
If the court recognizes that the prohibition of marijuana consumption and cultivation for non-commercial purposes limits the right to the free development of one's personality, it may determine that various articles of the General Health Act are unnecessarily punitive. This could give citizens the possibility to cultivate marijuana for personal use without having to turn to the underground market. Marijuana reform has gained unprecedented momentum throughout the Americas, of course. I mean, we're witness to that here every day. And it's, it's, it's part of the predicate on which this uh, program is formed. I don't even know if that sentence was proper. Sometimes I will invent stuff, and, and it will be improper. I think that might have been one of them. Uh, marijuana reform is uh, gaining uh, ground here in the United States. In uh, Colorado, Washington, Alaska, Oregon, and Washington, D.C., all legalizing marijuana, of course, for adults. That's the mantra you hear in every story like this. In December of 2013, Uruguay became the first country in the world to legally regulate marijuana. In Canada, the new prime minister, Justin Trudeau, and his liberal party have promised to legalize marijuana. There are currently medical marijuana legislation bills debated, being debated in Brazil, Chile, uh, Colombia, Costa Rica, and Mexico. Mexico has uh, borne the brunt of bad drug policies. It's good to see the country uh, begin to rock back the harmful drug war by debating a new approach, starting with marijuana reform. What an excellent article. And, and, and here's the thing. So how does this shine on the great USA? I mean, doesn't this leave a little egg on Uncle Sam's face? You have to remember that this whole prohibition of cannabis was born, sprouted, seeded, and spread across the world by policy edicts from this very country. Your elected officials. Because when when prohibition happens, if you're going to prohibit it here, how can you keep it from seeping across the border? This has been the question since the beginning with alcohol prohibition. I mean, you had the Cuban boats running, you know, Havana fine spirits from Cuba to Florida. Same thing going on in Mexico. Same thing going... Mexicans are like, ah, Tijuana, tequila, aha! And, you know, the Canadians are like, you know, we got our our Canadian mist up here. You crazy Americans, we're going to make some money off of you with your stupid prohibition. How are you going to enforce that? (laughs) When Al Capone shot up the world, they stopped that business, didn't they? They got together and put enough pressure on Congress... To repeal the 14th Amendment. Cannabis pro- prohibition shall, I'm sorry, alcohol prohibition shall be no more. And then we regulated and we took a hold of this industry and found a way to manage it that made sense. The only thing that doesn't still make sense is that there are so many people that have access to alcohol in cars that that crash scenario is never going to go away. Until the event uh, the car that you can climb into, pour yourself into, out of the bar, and it taxis you home via Google and some app. Plunk your address in and it takes you home. <laughs> Off you go. Until that happens, there will be drunk drivers in this country. But we've still decided that it, those drunk drivers and the deaths, the tremendous number of deaths that, that, that occur every year, because that's probably the biggest detriment, besides, you know, some other social health consequences. There are a lot of people uh, that end up on, uh, you know, liver transplant, or that would be potential liver transplant patients if it weren't for the fact that they, you know, have diseased their liver with alcoholism and cirrhosis. Um, so aside from the fact that it kills a lot of people in various ways every year, alcohol poisoning happens all the time. Unreported statistics. Statistics. It's unsexy. It's legal. We're not going to talk about alcohol poisonings. The people that die from drinking too much alcohol every year happens all the time. We're going to talk about that because it's not sexy. We'll talk about deaths that don't happen in cannabis. Though we'll make accusations that cannabis kills people. It does not. So, how does America look in the face of these changing laws, both on our country's borders? Mexico and Canada. Canada said, look, uh, we've been we've been marking you pace for pace since California in 96. 
We started our own medical program, and then we modified it through the very arguments with the Republicans over there. The, the, it's not really Republicans over there. It's, it's the conservative party, so to speak. They've been in control for like 12 years over there in Canada. Well, I don't know if it's all 12 years. I don't follow Canadian politics that closely, but I know they've been in control for a while. And the Liberal Party says, no, 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 we're going to win back the day by wrapping ourselves around the rest of the country who says this is nonsense and a waste of Canadian resources and a horrible defocus against violent crime by law enforcement. We're going to take the low-hanging fruit off the trees and make you climb a little higher if you, if for the real criminals, the ones who are dangerous, the ones who are committing crimes against people, not against themselves. That's what we're going to do with our money in Canada. And Mexico says, oh, this whole thing, you know, it's unconstitutional. If you want to grow some weed and smoke it for yourself, if you think that's developing your personality freely, you could do that here, too. We'll find out Wednesday. Oh, boy, I'm going to I bet you that's one of the top stories uh, tomorrow on cannabis <laughs> is uh, Mexico, a Supreme Court ruling. Now, I don't know how this works in Mexico with the Supreme Court. In, in the United States, you make your argument. The Supreme Court thinks over it for a good long time. They argue amongst themselves. They all contribute towards a, an opinion. And the dissenters write their dissent. And the opiners write their opine. And a decision comes forth. But it's announced many months often later than the decision was argued. Now, the argue, the court, uh, just, you know, just to reiterate here what's going on with this. Uh, the landmark case, they say, will be argued. Uh, the debate. They're going to determine whether the prohibition, according to this article, of the uh, it, it violates the landmark case could lead to legalization of marijuana. So it doesn't say. It says the debate in Mexico Supreme Court is extraordinary. It does not say whether this was previously argued or whether they had to argue it and then wait for a decision. Maybe you go in, in, in Mexico and argue it and they just give you a decision. So maybe we'll know tomorrow on Wednesday what's going on. Maybe not. We'll find out tomorrow. That story to be continued. Another story to be continued is Anderson Cooper. Uh, he said the magic words. I'll ask you the question. Doesn't matter the question. Uh, he's the one that said, uh, are you high? What are you talking about? At the beginning of the show, if you know those words and call us at 844-420-TALK and can tell me that after the break, you'll win a free cannabis no-smell bag from Candlelock. You're getting the full melt. Young students are our future. They're eager to learn. Eager to succeed eager to make the world a better place and they want to make it to school safely share the road take care when passing and always leave three feet between you and people on bikes bikes are legal road vehicles we're all drivers imagine a world where patients can use marijuana like any other medicine the marijuana patients organization challenges the status quo by helping our neighbors to enjoy a better quality of life Visit the MPO at MarijuanaPatients.org and enjoy informative articles, engaging debates, and information about treatments, doctors, and dispensaries in your area. Over 50,000 people have registered at MarijuanaPatients.org since 2010. Join us at the Marijuana Patients Organization today. MarijuanaPatients.org. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810 259 2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? (laughs) Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart, 
and the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. Hello, boys and girls. Your old friend the Crypt Keeper here with a Pottober News bullet in. <laughs> Ghoulies and creepies gathered he round for a map to patients partying down. As the days grow shorter to the end of month ten, it's time to gather friend among friend. Michigan card holders, admission is free to the X on the map dubbed Hall Deboween. This lure of free fun is perfectly true, and this is the invite. Yes, that means you. The vendors and speakers this day are just ghosts, exchanged for free entry, free food, and a toast. Asunder our differences this Hallow's Eve, so we may bring fire to glorious weed. You may light up and your neighbor may match it. The smoke in the air is to bury the hatchet. The contests you enter are all also free. Considerable prizes for the winners they'll be. Canna meds are welcome. It's alcohol free. The Jam Shack, Mount Morris, from 7 till 3. <laughs> Dabbawine sponsors include Depot Town of Ypsilanti, and Sweetly, Flint, Harborside, Ann Arbor, Third Coast, Ypsilanti, Dank Team, Flint, Two Guys in a Grow Shop, Burton, Florida Bob's Play, Puff and Stuff of Lansing, Happy Buddha, Lansing, The Spot, Kalamazoo, Compassion Club U.S., of Grand Rapids, Iron Labs, Walt Lake, Herbal Solutions, Ypsilanti, Bio Cultivation, The Herbal Center of Mount Morris, IDK Farms, Curse Leach and Associates of Birmingham, Act Labs, Lansing, Bill Clark, Bash Investments, Burton, Hybrid.Life Magazine, Once Bitten, Twice Baked, Lush Lighting in Nile, Cannabis Council, Detroit, Nichols Law Firm, East Lansing, The Green Rock Cafe, Flint, Urban Garden Supply, Flint, also the Marijuana Ranch, Happy Harvesters, The Full Melt Show, Lindy Fed, Maddie Eddie, Lex Cocaine, Jaxka Farm, and BDT Hazel Park. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. You were all done up, but it wasn't for me. You were up at the front. Back broadcasting live from the PetPain.com studios where you can hear the Full Melt Show in full tune. Monday through Friday from 7 until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to copy the program, it's really easy to join up on iTunes. Go to thefullmelt.com at the top of the page. Find the iTunes link. Click and subscribe. It's just that simple. So if you want to try and get on the catalog bag thing, if you want to win the prize, it's uh, 844-420-TALK. Call us now. Uh, while we're talking about the next story, we'll take some calls and uh, find a winner for the catalog bag. It is a $50 value. We're throwing in a $25 shirt. It's a full melt shirt, a show shirt. It is the premium one, the uh, limited edition. So uh, throwing those together for you uh, for answering our secret question. It wasn't so secret, just let me tell you. Um, the other big news going on uh, today, aside from the various and sundry reports you see about uh, people violating cannabis laws, about two or three of those stories are in the top ten every a day. It seems that there is have been some issue about the uh, uh, coming, I don't know, days in Michigan. Michigan has been in tremendous turmoil, you may or may not know, since the Medical Marijuana Act passed some seven years ago, uh, back in 2008. Went into effect in April of 2009. Close enough to 420, funny enough. Um, ever since then, uh, the same guy that we elected at the same time we passed that law, Mr. Bill Schuette, was the principal opponent to the Medical Marijuana Act, saying before it was voted in that uh, there's nothing in this law, but putting on TV... All all across the state, uh, TV commercials saying there's nothing in this law that will prevent pot shops from popping up all across the the state. You're going to pot shops up your butt. If you want the pot shops, vote for the law. But don't vote for this law because it's going to be dangerous for kids. And, you know, uh, those pot smokers, you never can trust them. It's going to push up violent crime. Uh, The police, you're going to have to pay more money for police. I mean, they just rang all the bells. None of it true. And then later came back and said, look, um, there's nothing in this law that says you could have a pot shop. Uh, this is what they do. These prohibitionists still talk out of both sides of their mouth as long as the answer lines their pockets. As long as it's easy for police to make their way by doing low hanging fruit crime. Oh, you're a pot guy. Let us let's see what else you got. Let's that opens the door for me, doesn't it? I can check you out upside down. I can stick a microscope up your butt now because I found you with a roach. 
Really? Um, in Michigan, the way the tea leaves are reading as we speak right now, I believe there's a setup happening here inside the state that is going to target the closure of every single marijuana shop as we know it in the state. Now, the ones in this state are existing contrary to state law and probably federal law. Okay, not probably. They do exist contrary to the law as it's been ruled by the courts. See, in Michigan, the only protected cannabis, because there is no legal cannabis, the only protected cannabis where you can't get arrested and prosecuted is that which you grow for yourself within certain confines, under certain conditions, very specific and described. It's not just the fact that you got to have a medical marijuana card, but the doctor that signed the certification to allow you access to that medical marijuana card must be a bona fide position, meaning that you would have to have gone to him and had an ongoing condition before he ever signed your paperwork. Or it's not bona fide. You get no protection. It's still illegal. I don't care if you are a medical patient. I don't care how bad your condition is. I don't care the relief that you're receiving from your pot plant. It means nothing to me that you may die without it. Because you had an unlocked door. <clears throat> Anybody could have run in there and taken that pot while that lock, closed lock facility is closed lock facility. Uh, these are the rules. If you don't prescribe by those rules, if you don't abide by them, if you don't prescribe to those, subscribe to them is the better way to say it. Uh, then you have no protection. It's still illegal. You're still going to go to jail. You're still going to get punished as if you were standing on the corner with a pager. This is what these people have done to that law. So in the light of all that, now that we've gone back and started putting together Am I Legalized, which says, you know what, in the grander scheme of things, all arguments aside, taxes and everything else, we're going to tax and regulate this and take uh, this uh, issue away from police and place it into the hands of those people that handle social health issues. And we're going to tax and regulate this for retail purposes And we're going to allow for shops and testing and all this kind of simple, normal regulation. And if worse comes to worse, because you can grow yourself as an adult, you can grow for yourself a few plants, no big deal. But if you happen to violate any marijuana rule in Michigan, this law will be modified so that it's only a hundred dollar fine. It's a hundred dollar civil infraction. (laughs) There is no criminal charge. There is no probation. There is no piss testing. There is no criminal justice grind it's just a parking ticket pay your hundred bucks and go this takes all incentive police from police uh, away from running chasing down a pot plant chasing after a jagged leaf plant nobody cares but you because right now the legislature's got it all set up so that you make all kinds of money if you run and bust those people so you've got this horrible disincentive to act improperly to not Abide by the badge that says protect and serve, but rather to badger and abuse because it means your payday. It means that if you want additional cars and maybe some overtime this this year, you better go out and bust some more potheads because that's where the money's at. We can take their cars, take their houses. Doesn't even matter if it's connected or not. We'll claim it is somehow. We'll get it wrapped up in court. We'll sell that stuff and take the money. 80% of everything that we bring in goes to our department. We can spend it any way we want. Basically, it makes us... Robbers with badges. And that's exactly how they've been doing it. So in this state, I think they're about to, with the passage of these changed bills, House Bills 4209 and 4210, along with, uh, was it 4278, 4872? I can't remember the other one, the one that they just tacked down about the seed to sale tracking. Uh, These bills are a package. They're moving through the House and now the Senate. And I believe they're going to pass these bills. They're not supposed to modify the Medical Marijuana Act. They're supposed to act in tandem with it. They're supposed to uh, parallel the act. They're doing this so they don't have to get the majority to override the people's initiative that we did back in 2008. They don't want to modify that. They just want to run a tandem program alongside of it and say, we're going to do this instead. We're going to dismantle the patient caregiver system. We're going to take away your dispensaries and give you another dispensary that we've approved of in a different way that really lines the pockets of our people and takes it away from the existing medical community. The ones that did all the political work, the ones that did all the teaching, the ones that poured their hearts and souls and spirits into this industry and grew and developed it. We're going to take it away from them. 
Detroit City Council passing uh, ordinances probably later this week that will call it from about 184 dispensaries down to about 40. And then later, I think the state's going to go back and attack the remaining 40 and the rest of the ones in this state based on the fact that they passed these other laws that says you've got to close these shops while we get ready four months from now to engage new ones. It's all a lot of booing. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.